some cable modem help. Gavin does. Gavin writes in, I have a really old cable modem and I want to upgrade to something that includes wireless. I do a lot of downloading and gaming as well as streaming videos through my Xbox. I was wondering what routers you would suggest at the high end. I looked into a Motorola Surfboard SBG6580 since it would be a dual modem and router, but I can't find any reviews of it. Thanks, Gavin. I didn't even think actually Motorola sold like I, I the like I didn't think you could buy the surfboard wireless modems in, in terms of the public, right? I saw a bunch up on oh, eBay no. for like 250 bucks, 220 bucks. Well, I was interested in getting a Doxus 3 modem for right. my cable service so I could get the, you know, if I when I eventually want to move up to 50 megabit per second <laughs> speeds and pay through the nose for it, I'd have a modem that I owned because I'm also renting the modem from the cable provider for oh, about no, no, three bucks a month. I bought a cable but modem it's, it's, immediately. But it's three bucks a month, and you gotta leverage that against the cost of the product you're about to buy. Like, if I'm gonna spend a hundred bucks, how many months of service would that be before I actually get my money back out of it? I bought my first cable modem for 50 bucks. I've had it for five years, which means I've saved three times 12 times five. Which Good money. Which is a lot more than... Good money. Yeah, I've saved money. See, I've also needed to upgrade a modem too, so it was really nice. I had a problem with the modem, so right. it was, oh, I, I'm renting, so I just take it back and get exchange it for another one. Anyway, this particular product you're looking at is a Doxus 3 modem with a four port gigabit switch built into it, this router, as well as uh, 802.11 in Wi Fi. So it is really everything in one. I'm a little leery about those all in one products, but it is compatible with most cable companies. Uh, at least I know with Comcast, they're yeah. big on the whole surfboard thing. So I mean, the nice thing about cable modems is they're all all cable modems are essentially certified by the same organization, Cable Labs, which is run basically by cable companies. Personally, though, I keep your Wi-Fi router and your cable modem separate because unless your cable company has updated things on their end, you're probably not going to actually gain anything upgrading the cable modem on your end. Yep, I have a gigabit end router with right. wireless and uh, four port gigabit switching uh, for about half the price of what that product's gonna cost you from Motorola. And then, I, okay, say 75 bucks left, and then you could either rent that modem for, like I said, three to five bucks right. a month. It's usually closer to three. Way the costs out there, but I, yeah. I still prefer having separate devices, like you said. Yeah, I mentioned last week, Netgear is a $150 WNDR3700. That's pretty much the wireless end router to beat at the top of the line for 80 bucks or so. Uh, Buffalo's WZRHP G300NH is still getting marks for solid performance, especially if you have basically issues in corners of your house or the, the far edges of the living room and stuff like that. External antennas on that bad boy. Uh, it's worth checking out. Both will support 802.11G if you don't have any end clients yet. If you don't have any end devices yet, like your computer or your notebook or your, you know, iPad or whatever it is, um, you may want to go with like a fifty, a cheap fifty dollar uh, 802.11G modem or 802.11G modem. Like the BG modems yeah. are out there and they're popular and they're they're affordable. You as buy well. them on Craigslist for like eight dollars now. So I'm just saying, you know, because end end routers are, should continue to get better and get cheaper over time.